This is the Radza X4. It's a single board computer that is based on an Intel processor. It's nearly the size of a Raspberry Pi and is powered by an Intel N100 which can go up to 3.4 GHz. Since the N100 is based on an x86 architecture, it can support various operating systems based on Linux and you can even run Windows on it. It also has a BIOS that you can make changes like any other computer. Now the main highlight about this board is that even though it's an Intel based single board computer, it's nearly the size of a Raspberry Pi 5. I even tried placing it inside the official Raspberry Pi 5 case. It nearly fitted inside the case, even the mounting holes aligned with the case, but it was slightly sticking out of the case by a few millimeters. Now let's go ahead and explore the board and see its various components. So first of all, we have this M.2 M key connector that provides full four lane PCI Express 3.0 connectivity. Now we can connect a 2230 NVMe SSD to this. Now below this we have is this Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module and we have these two antennas that are connected to this module here. Now let's look at the side here. Here we have is a USB-C connector that supports power delivery as input. Then we have this two 4K micro HDMI connectors that output 4K at 60 frames per second. Then we have this 3.5mm jack for headphone and a microphone input. Then we also have this power button with which we can turn on this board. Now I have bought the 64 GB EMMC version so I have this EMMC module that is already soldered on this board here. Now next to that we have this RP2040 chip that is used to control these GPIO pins. Now in order to use these GPIO pins you need to press this boot cell button such that you have access to the RP20 to control these GPIO pins. Then we have this 4 pin connector with which we can connect an external PoE hat such that this board can be powered using a PoE hat. Now on the sides we have this RJ45 Ethernet port that supports 2.5 gigabit speeds. Now this also has PoE support but you need the PoE hat for this. Now next to that we have this three USB 3.0 connectors as well as one USB 2.0 connector. So these were the various components on the top side of the board. Let's look at the bottom side. So on the bottom side we have notably is this Intel processor N100. Now this is a 4 core 4 thread processor that can reach up to 3.4 gigahertz in speeds. Next to that we have this LPDDR5 RAM and I have bought right now the 8 GB version. Next we have are these 2 pin connectors. So these are actually used to connect the Ratsa heatsink fan that we have right now here as well as we have this 2 pin connector for an RTC battery. So this RTC battery also comes in the package. Now let's go ahead and actually mount this heatsink to this port right now. So this is the first look of the heatsink and you get these attachments to this. So here we have is this fan and this is the connector with which we are going to connect this to the board right now. So right now I mounted all the four studs here as well as removed the plastic film on top of the thermal paste and also I have connected the fan to this connector. Now I'm going to flip this and I'm going to mount it on this heatsink right now. So we have the board now attached to this heatsink and the device now becomes a little bit heavy because of the heatsink weight. So now what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and power this device and see what this device can do for us. Firstly, I installed Windows 11 on it and also installed the drivers provided by Ratsa from their site. I then used it for a while and it was working really smoothly like a normal computer. I then opened a YouTube video, played it in full HD and the video played smoothly without dropping any frames. I then switched it to 4K resolution. It also played the video smoothly without any frames dropped. Next I played the WebGL sample rendering and found that it remained at 60 frames per second for about 10,000 elements but dropped when I increased it to 15,000 elements. While on Ubuntu it remained at 60 frames per second for 5,000 elements and the frame rate dropped for 10,000 elements. Graphics related processing is usually better on Windows. 
Next, I wanted to stress the CPU with some load, so I used CPU Z for this and found that the CPU would start throttling at around 64 degrees. But the N100 can go up to 85 degrees before it should start thermal throttling. So I then went into the BIOS and there was a power limit of 6 watts. I changed the power limit 1 to 12.5 watts and ran the test and this time the CPU did not throttle but the temperatures kept rising. This was also the same when I ran the stress test using Sysbench in Ubuntu. Now I didn't wait for the thermal throttling to kick in that would usually happen at higher temperatures. Now since this is an Intel x86 CPU which is usually not efficient compared to ARM CPUs, I decided to replace a thermal pad with some copper shim and thermal paste and fixed back the heatsink. Then I ran the stress test for about 3 minutes on Windows and the CPU temperature was under 54 degrees without any CPU throttling as compared to using it with the thermal pad. This was also observed in Ubuntu where the temperature remained below 48 degrees. I then ran Geekbench test on it and found the single core performance was nearly 30% better than the Raspberry Pi 5 and the Orange Pi 5 Max. While the multi-core performance was nearly 60% better than the Raspberry Pi 5 but nearly the same as the Orange Pi 5 Max which has 8 cores. I then ran Geekbench test on Ubuntu and found that the performance was slightly better than running the test on Windows. Now during all these tests, the power consumption of the board went up to 18 watts of energy usage. Next I tested the read write speeds of the NVMe and I was able to get about 3200 megabytes per second for read and write speeds. While when I tested it on Linux using HD Param, I got about 2200 megabytes per second. I'm not sure why I was getting lower speeds. I also checked LS PCI output and it does show 4 lane PCI Express 3.0 speeds. I will try to find this out so make sure to subscribe to this channel to know more about it. I then ran the memory bandwidth test and got around 4800 megabytes per second for mem copy and 7000 megabytes per second for block copy. Now this memory bandwidth tool gives measurements in terms of megabytes which is a binary based unit. So based on all these tests you get an idea of how this board really performs. Now since I make videos around smart home automations, I had to try out Home Assistant on it. I installed and set up Home Assistant, then I set up Whisper for speech to text and Piper for text to speech and set up the voice assist pipeline. Then on giving a voice command, the Whisper converted speech to text in under 3 seconds with the small int 8 model which was around 4.5 seconds on the Orange Pi 5 Max and nearly 14 seconds on the Raspberry Pi 5. Also on the power consumption, at idle it was consuming 7 watts of energy with the NVMe and the fan running. I would say Home Assistant is the best use case for this board for running your total local voice assistant. You can also use this board to run Open Media World to have your own NAS server, run Proxmox to have multiple virtual machines on it or use it just as a regular PC for web browsing, watching videos or maybe for some light gaming. Since it's an x86 CPU, there are pretty much endless use cases for it. Now let's look at some of the caveats. Firstly, since it's an x86 CPU, the idle power usage is around 7 to 8 watts which includes a constantly running fan and the NVMe, which would be two times that of an ARM based CPU like Raspberry Pi 5 which consumes around 3 to 4 watts of energy. Secondly, because of the board size, there's not enough space to fit a 64 bit memory bus for accessing the memory but it has a 32 bit memory bus size. This means you don't get the full power of the LPDDR5 RAM. Finally, the fan speed does not adjust based on the temperature and will continuously run at full speed. Overall, this is a good powerful board that you can get for around 57 euros for the 4 GB RAM and 75 euros for the 8 GB RAM which is a tad bit lower as compared to the Raspberry Pi 5 and also nearly the same size as the Raspberry Pi 5. Now Raza is planning to release the next version that is the X4L and I'll be making a video about it. So make sure to hit that subscribe button to see the full video once it is out. Now if you like this video make sure to hit that like button. Till then take care and I will see you in my next one.